Hello, I am Sandra Monroe. I am the Director of Product at Anaconda. Today, I'm going to walk you through a comprehensive demo to showcase the power of Snow Park for Python. I'm going to also walk you through some of the tools and command lines you will use to unlock the power of Snow Park in Python. And then I will show you how to apply this information in a comprehensive demo that you can try after the presentation. Let's get started. First, let's start with the fundamentals. What is a package manager? A package ma manager is a software tool or system that simplifies the process of installing, updating, configuring, and removing software packages on a computer or within your development environment. By automating repetitive tasks and handling complex dependency management, package managers promote modularity, code reuse, and collaboration. So what does this mean? Within Python's ecosystem, there are two fundamental problems. Most projects depend on many other projects in order to function, and this forms a complex network called a dependency graph. These projects are managed independently and release updates, release updates are asynchronously. A package manager is needed to install and correct subset and versions of each project to carefully update and remove select packages. So you need a package manager to be able to kind of be the backend um, traffic controller of all your packages. Next, let's talk about the environment management, which refers to the practice of managing, the, managing and controlling the various environments that are required in software development, testing and deployment. It involves creating, configuring, and maintaining the necessary software, infrastructure, and resources needed to support the different stages of software lifecycle. Let's talk about the first one. Consistency and collaboration are one of the key stakeholders. So it enables you, enables you to maintain uniformity and standardization in the setup and configuration of your software environments. When we talk about stability, this enables you the reliability and predictability of software environments, ensuring that they remain consistent and functional over time without unexpected errors or disruptions. This is especially important on numerical computation projects where accuracy is vital. Reproducibility is the ability to recreate the software environments with the exact configuration and dependencies resulting in consistent and reproducible results. And we know within some ecosystems like healthcare, this is extremely important. By addressing the consistency, collaboration, stability, and reproducibility, environment management promotes, promotes reliable software de development, and smooth operations, and effective collaboration. It reduces configuration-related issues, mitigates risk, and provides a solid foundation for developing high quality software and predictability behavior across different environments. Let's now talk about what is um, Conda when it comes to a package manager. So the next stage of for what a package environment manager can do lets us talk about what Conda, how Conda makes the experience seamless. Conda is an open source package, manage, package and environment management system primarily used in the Python ecosystem, but also used within the R ecosystem as well. Um, Conda is designed to simplify the installation, management, and distribution of software packages and environments. So what is the Conda package management? So if we think about it, Conda simplifies the package and environment management by handling installation, dependencies, resolutions, and updates. It manages the repository of pre-built packages, manages the com complex dependencies, and allows the creation of isolated environments. Users can update and install and remove packages, ensuring the consistency and reproducibility within the software development. Here are some key functionalities inside Conda. So it's designed to handle specific needs for data scientists and numerical libraries. Originally built for Python, but also works for other languages like R, Java, C++, to name a few. It works on a major operating system without requiring administrative privileges. And Conda determines which package have updates and whether those updates are compatible and can be applied. Now let's look at what uh, we talked a little bit about the dependency graph. Let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. 
So as you can see here, this is this is one of those areas where you have all of these dependencies around one package. So if you look at Python, Python is the center package here. And the uh, the open source package ecosystem, you definitely want something that can simplify that in that dependency. And so here are some when we look at all of these dependencies that come in, you want to make sure that your package manager analyzes all the dependencies, looks at all those dependencies, and make sure that those dependencies don't collide with each other. And this is where Conda really kind of lever um, handles the dependency graph very well. Um, I've mentioned the Conda environment, it's, which is a, a man, which the Conda environment management. But it refers to the practice of creating, saving, and uploading, and managing, and controlling all those isolated environments. So if you think about it, let's say you have three different environments, but you have one environment that needs Python 2.7, or one environment that needs Python 3.4, or any other versions or, or makes of, of Python. And so you want to be able to isolate those. And so whether you have a 3.10 and a 3.12 that you're that you're testing on, you want to have those isolated. And even if you have an R environment. So Conda lets you build all these environments and allows you to isolate those so that when you, you can flip and switch between those very easily and quickly. And you can export those environments to share with um, your counterparts. Now, how do you get Conda? One of the ways to get Conda is through our distribution. And the common pattern is to um, a distribution is a common pattern of open source software. At um, any time there are a large number of different packages that need to interoperate, there's an extreme value of one trusted curator. And that's where Anaconda steps in. We are that trusted curator around the Python ecosystem for a lot of highly regulated industries, along with a lot of industries that really want to uh, make sure that those packages come from a trusted source. Conda is one of the most popular data science platforms, and it runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, and you don't have to be an admin to run it. There are two different ways you can get Conda. It's either Miniconda, and Miniconda is really meant for, it's the minimal installation of Conda. It comes with Conda, Python, and all the dependencies that make those two, those two packages run. And so it's much more lightweight and easier. And the idea, the reason why you'd want that is if you already know what you want to bring in to build your environment, so you don't need all that extra dependency help. And then the distribution is a collection of packages, the most used packages within the ecosystem. And this distribution allows you to just download the distribution and just um, hit the ground running. So you don't have to think about all the other packages you need to bring in. They're already there within that distribution. And so, so how does all this work together with Snowflake? And so if you're using Python with Snowflake, Conda can help you manage your Python packages and dependencies and environments by using the Snowflake connector for Python. For <clears throat> developing Python applications that will connect to, this, to Snowflake. It's available as a Conda package today, making it easy to install and work with your Conda packages you're already using. If you're writing user-defined functions or UDFs the stored and stored procedures in Python for Snowpark, Conda can connects to the official Snowflake Conda package channel and letting you install packages that are guaranteed to work across your local environment when Snowpark. Um, you can specify Anaconda packages to install when you create your Python UDF. And when, when queries that call that Python UDF are executed inside Snowflake warehouse, those Anaconda packages are installed seamlessly and are cached in the virtual warehouse on your behalf. And when developing your Python applications inside Snowflake, Conda makes it easy to pull those packages from multiple channels into your Python environment. With one command, you can create an environment with packages from your Snowflake channel that will run inside Snowflake and um, Snowpark in order to develop and test your Snowflake applications. Um, and, we, and when you do use Conda, you can use it with any of your favorite IDEs from um, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, Visual Studio Code, along with um, PyCharm, and any of the uh, um, typical most popular IDEs. Conda is also available for with to automate with certain CI CD tools like Travis CI, um, GitLab, and it also has um, can have tools within your current ecosystem. 
So let's kind of look a little bit of how you get started for as we're building out this comprehensive demo. So let's go ahead and get let's go ahead and talk about how we get started. The first thing is you need to download and install Anaconda. And so this makes sure that you can get all the packages you need. And then you want to validate the version of Conda that you're on. And next, you want to set your Snowflake channel in your Conda RC file. As you can see here, I've kind of um, pulled that in. And finally, you want to view your Conda RC file to validate that that channel has been set. And this second line of code here just lets you know that this is how you can set your channel. And then if you cat your Conda RC file, you'll be able to see that that channel has been set. As best practice, especially if you're creating a UDF, you, well, while you ins you can install Snow Park from default or even Conda Forge, using the Snowflake channel exclusively will ensure that the versions of deeper dependencies like NumPy match the availability on Snowflake itself. Otherwise, the UDFs may experience some errors or, and aren't they? It won't be that the your application may have problems. So we definitely want you to use the Snowflake channel within Anaconda so that you can, everything, the compatibility is there for you. And then let's talk about some of the basic uh, Conda commands and configurations. So the first one is we wanna look at our Conda version. This will tell us what version of Conda we're working on. Then cat Conda will allow you to view your Conda RC file. And if you open your Conda RC file, you'll be able to kind of make any changes that you may need, may need to make that are necessary. And um, a couple of other ones kind of show you all the sources, where everything is coming from before you start building any of your applications or defined functions. And next, the basic uh, Conda environment management. So when so now we've got all of our channels there and we have every one of our channels together, we wanna to be able to create an environment. So the first thing we're gonna do is we'll want to look at our environment list. And we may not have anything there but the base environment, which comes with your distribution. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to create an environment. And you do that pretty, pretty quickly and easily. It's conda create dash n means what the, what you want, the name. And then you put whatever name you want, like my env or any kind of name you want to put there. And then once you've named your environment, you'll need to activate your environment. And once you've activated your environment, you can start working in that environment. Um, once you are finished with your project or your application, you want to deactivate that environment and take it back to the base. And then this is how some of the stuff we need to do in order to get our Snowflake um, demo that we're going to do in a, in, a, in a bit up and running. So first thing we want to do is we want to create our Snowflake environment for our bike example. Um, and then these are the... We named it the Snowflake Bike Share Pittsburgh. That's our example. We pulled in Python 3.8, notebooks, pandas, Matplotlib, scikit-learn, and Snowflake Snowpark Python. And then we want to activate that environment. And then next, if we want to share this environment, we can export that environment file out to share it with one of our um, counterparts or our collaborators. And then finally, um, this just gives you a little bit more information around sharing that environment and how when, when you do share that environment with somebody, how they can activate that environment themselves. <clears throat> and if you need to like add any more, if you wanna make sure those packages are only pulled from the Snowflake channel, you can make sure that you can kind of override the channel. So every package comes from the Snowflake channel within Anaconda. And finally, let's talk about the, the Pittsburgh bike share. We've kind of talked about what, what is a package, what is an environment, all the dependencies, how big a dependency graph is, how to use Conda, and all of that together. And then we kind of walk you through a little bit of how to create an environment, how to activate an environment, how to share an environment, and how to get your Conda RC file pulled together. So now we're going to pull all this together in a demo. One of the things we want to do is we're going to use the Snowflake Snowpark for Python. And then we're going to build a user-defined function that will give us some predictions around the number of rides that this um, uh, organization, Pittsburgh Bike Share, is using. And given and we want to have some predictions around that. Given the, the weather conditions, the current month, whether it's a holiday or a weekend, where do I need to have the bikes at? How many rides come from where? And in order to do this, we're pulling 
data from uh, the Healthy Rides program, which is that ride program in Pittsburgh. And we're loading all that data into Snowflakes. And then we're pulling the, the daily weather from the NOAA, um, uh, the National Weather Association, so that we can actually pull all of the weather on this during this period so we can do some really good predictions. And then finally, before you set up the, some things you may need to do within your Snowflake environment, you'll need to set up your environment variables in your batch profile that's related to your Snowflake account. If you think those variables are already set, you can cat your bash profile and verify that they're all set. You can also check, you wanna check to make sure in your Conda RC file that your Snowflakes channel is set. And then finally, you can make sure that all of this is activated for your environment by just, just making sure that at the end you do source bash profile so that everything is set. And then um, finally, before we get started in the demo, this is one of the er one of the things we want to make sure we open a terminal in a or your in your or your command line and make sure that we type we create this environment. So this is the this is the co the code you want. You want conda create dash n, and then we're going to type all this. And you can always name it something differently, but these are all the packages you need to bring in: Python, notebooks, pandas, Matplotlib, Scikit-Learn, Snowflake. Um, Snowflake Snowpark for Python and the Snowflake connector for Python. And then once all of that comes in, um, you'll want to activate your environment. And then that gives you the environment that you're going to use in the next demo. Um, thank you very much. Now let's go to the demo. So I've opened up my Visual Studio just to kind of walk you through what we're doing. As you can see, a lot of the stuff we've already talked about is here. What, what the bike share is, kind of all of the stuff we've already talked about in our presentation. And then the actual Conda Create um, Snowflake Bike Share Pittsburgh, this is the channel. You can see here that we've also defined out what version of Scikit-Learn we're wanting to do. So a couple of, couple of things I want to point out here. To begin with, we want to create our Conda environment using packages from Snowflake channel to ensure the compatibility between my local Python environment and the Snowpark environment. Since we're going to build a scikit-learn model and persist it as a file, it's important that we ensure the exact same version of scikit-learn is used on both my local environment and Snowpark. And that is why we have to actually call out that version right here. And then we'll want to activate our environment. So because I've already created the environment, I'm just going to activate it. So now that I've activated my environment, I'm able to kind of see what is in that environment. I'm gonna do a conda list so you can see, even though we've only added these files here, you can see that the dependencies with this file are much deeper. So there's a lot more that gets added, even though you only added a few packages, there's all these dependencies that come along with the environment. And one of the things I wanted to point out is, like I said before, we had to have a certain level of scikit-learn, a certain version. So we wanted to make sure that we pulled in this version and all the dependencies that will make that version work are also pulled in so that we are definitely only working with that version because that's going to be the version we're building our model on. So now that we've done that and we've set up our environment and have everything Pull together, we're going to go ahead and open a Jupyter Notebook. So I've brought up my Jupyter Notebook. If, if I go to my um, account, you can see that I don't have a database called Bike Share. I, I don't have any of that set up. And that's what we're going to do in our first stage. We're going to stage and load um, all of our information and data. So let's get started there. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be able to, we're going to pull in all of our required Snowpark packages. And then we're going to connect our local variables, the ones we set up previously in our local bash file. And then we're going to set up our database and we're going to activate that session. 
And then finally, we're going to create and load the bike table. So we're gonna we're gonna pull in the raw data, convert it to a CSV format, then pull in that data into a file, and then we're gonna set up our SQL database. So we're gonna have our all of our table um, columns set up. And there they are, they're all set up. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna do the exact same thing with the weather. So we're gonna pull in our weather data, we're gonna convert it, we're gonna set up the table. And then we're going to close out the session once the table is set up. And then I should be able to go back over here to the warehouse. And you can see there's now my Pittsburgh bike. And if I look at my public, you can see I have my two day tables set up with all of my um, parameters set. Um, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and prepare all that data. So again, we're gonna set up our database, get our users and then activate our sessions. And then we're gonna clean and prepare the data. The first thing we need to do is join the bike data and the weather tables to provide a daily count of the number of rides and the max temperature. So here we've got the number of rides and the max temperature. Since we're using the Snowfark data frame functions, we want to clean the data for the rides that both start short where the bike is returned at the same location. Extract that data from a portion of the start time of the ride, group by the by and count the number of valid rides and finally join that information with the weather data. So here we've got the max temperatures, the, the rides, the when weather is a holiday. And so that's that's the next UDF that we're going to run. We're going to be able to state if, if something is a holiday or if it is a weekend. And so we want to make sure that we create UDFs to go over each row and extract the name of the month and a Boolean value, whether that date is a weekend or holiday. And finally, the full training of that data set table will be constructed by calling a UDF over the date column by write, and writing those results back into Snowflake. Now we have all of our data. We have our temperatures, the number of rides, the months. Is it a weekend? Is it a holiday when the max rides happened? And it gives us all of this information so we can we can start training our model. So we'll close out that session and we'll come here to train our model. We'll go ahead and set this up again. Now that all the training data is ready and stored in the Snowflake table, we want to take a portion of that training to train the machine learning model using Scikit-Learn. To do this, we use a Snowpark data frame called SampleBy function, which allows me to perform a stratified sampling over the table to ensure that the training data is an accurate re representation of the full data set. By using the SampleBy to sample every evenly over the month column, we can ensure that a third of the rows from every month are extracted into a pandas data frame in order to train the scikit-learn model. We don't wanna pull all of the information because that is just a huge amount of data. We, we should be able to pull a sampling of that data and then take that sampling and provide our X and Y values. And now that we have our X and Y values, we're ready to train the scikit-learn regression model to predict the number of bike rides given the maximum forecasted temperature, the month and whether the day is a holiday or not. And then finally, um, the model needs to incorporate two processing steps. The first one is the one hot encode the, that the strings of the month column can and apply the standard scalar to the other columns. So this allows us to take all of this information and come up with a good extrapolation. And then we can come up with a gradient regression model. Plotting the feature importance validates our hypothesis. As you can see here, the maximum temperature is the largest factor predicting the number of rides with the smaller contributions being the weekend or 
holiday or the month column. And finally, the final step is we want to optimize our model to a local file. We will use this file in the next section to build our user-defined function to use the model to predict the number of rides. So we'll use this model here to predict our ride prediction model. And that is our final one to look at. And so we'll go ahead and go in here and run. And as you can see up here, we are actually pulling in a lot of importing the packages that we have stored in our environment. We can import those directly into our um, notebook. So now that the model has been trained and saved, we can build a user-defined function on Snowflake so that we can use that model to predict the number of rides using a fully trained set of, of the data we prepared earlier. One of the things we can take out of this is we, we use the pandas UDF. The prediction function expects a data frame with the four columns and will return a pandas series for the prediction of the number of rides. The important aspects of this, aspects of the permanent prediction of user-defined functions are, one, create a stage where you can upload code that will be stored. Here, this is called model stage. Load the model into memory and ensure that we have the input feature names in the correct order by using the input features name names from the one hot encoding processor. And then declare the exact version of scikit-learn. And here, as you can see, we declared it the 1.0.2 that we pulled into our environment and use the snowflake types, panda data frame type and pandas series type to type hints to provide fine grain typing per column. So this will give you a lot of information around that. Now that the UDF has been registered and has been used, we can pull all this information in and we can use a Python function to make predictions over the whole training set as a snow park data frame. So as you can see here, now we have our predictions. And finally, since I've saved the output to a prediction UDF to the new table in Snowflake, I can then use the reg R2 to compute the R squared score between the actual daily number of rides and the predicted number of rides using that um, scikit-learn regression model. And here you, you can see this is our prediction score. And finally, we can close our session. Thank you guys so much for walking through the demo with me and attending this presentation. You can download um, the not only the notebooks, but all the information around the demo. It is all available on anaconda.org. And again, thank you so much for your time today.